There's an old saying that goes, everything has changed, but nothing has changed. This certainly rings true in this instance. It's time we tip our hats and celebrate a remarkable, uniquely Australian cattle breed. More than 60 years in the making. Our very own icon is in fact Australia's natural wonder, the Droughtmaster. It all started for the droughty as an experiment in tropical crossbreeding to overcome the perennial problems of drought, heat, ticks and general hard times that were causing severe losses in the herds of British bred cattle in the early 1900s. The introduction of zebu cattle into Australia provided a number of astute cattlemen the opportunity to develop a breed more suitable to the Australian environment. Those were pioneering days and creating a new breed was not only a great challenge, it also severely rocked the boat of conventional cattle breeding in what was a very traditional and conservative industry. Extensive crossbreeding continued and by 1952 an association known as the Zebu Cross Beef Cattle Breeders Association was formed at a meeting called by Monty Atkinson and held in a tent at the Townsville Show. Monty Atkinson was elected president. Ten years later the drought masters went their own way and the Droughtmaster Stud Breeder Society was confirmed at a meeting in Townsville's Queen's Hotel on July 3 of that year, again with Monty at the helm. Nineteen studs were designated as Foundation members, whose principals had been among breeders actively engaged in developing the breed. Under the banner of the Australian Tropical Beef Breeders Association, prior to the Droughtmaster Stud Breeder Society, to our Foundation members, a debt of gratitude goes out to all for their dedication, perseverance and foresight during these early years. Records indicate that during the years 62 to 63, 67 members are listed with the Society. So why the name Droughtmaster? The droughty name is synonymous with the environment in which the breed has evolved for the animal's performance and production in harsh, tropical, hot and tick infested land. Subjected to many drought conditions, they've proved that they can master many different environments. They are drought master cattle by name and by nature. It was upon these conditions that the breed nurtured its standard of excellence. Uh, their reproduction and uh, docility and their ability to convert grass into carbs and grass into red meat. The Droughtmaster is a pure breed after five generations of grading up, for which a program is devised and known as the D system. Purebred Droughtmaster cattle in the stud breeding program are referred to as D5, and the proof of the program's success has been in the judging. Over many years, Droughtmaster cattle have taken out gongs and ribbons at shows across the country and around the world. Back home, the society was going and growing from strength to strength. Classifiers were introduced to improve stud herds and cull off any animals that weren't meeting the standards expected. Honorary life memberships were awarded in recognition for the dedication and continued support of the society and this tradition continues today. During the 70s, the beef industry experienced a recession where the value of bulls was reduced by 75% and morale was at its lowest within the industry. This was a low point. Fortunately, during the beef cattle recession, livestock exports of breeding stock began to expand from a haphazard exercise into a more sophisticated business, with Droughtmaster cattle attracting attention, a pivotal moment for the breed during this time. In 1983, the rains came. The economy was showing improvement and the store and breeder markets were buoyant. Trials continued on Droughtmaster's performance in breeding ability and tick resistance. The cows are very fertile. The bulls are also very fertile. Uh, they're cattle that can perform under various conditions, not only here on the coast, they can perform well out in the hard areas, uh, the uh, temperate areas uh, where it gets uh, very, very dry. 
Interest continued to rise in the Northern Rivers district of New South Wales, where ticks abounded. The drought master continued to stake its claim as Australia's natural wonder. The Droughtmaster breed was represented at World Expo 88 with a film promoting the breed's benefits featuring at the event. The results of the decision to participate with a short film created a compact, professional, engaging invitation to capture audience to seek out and buy Australia's own unique beef cattle breed. There are many reasons why breeders like Droughtmaster. They're quiet and docile cattle, which means you can work them with ease. Exports were strong across our usual markets, but continued throughout the 1990s to places like Africa, the Middle East, Thailand, China, Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. In the year 2000, the first Droughtmaster website was launched. The Droughtmaster Society not only welcomed the new millennium, but also launched its first address in cyberspace, keeping abreast of the latest technology within the beef industry. In 2010, the Society purchased its own offices, with headquarters now firmly established in Ipswich, west of Brisbane. It's from here, over the past 12 years, that the breed and society has flourished. With 32,000 registered females over 20 months of age recorded on the Society's current herd book, and 650 members across the country, the Droughtmaster breed has never been better positioned. Through 60 years, of good stewardship and deft management. But it always comes back to the droughty itself and the animal's ability to shine through its natural temperament and adaptability. And clearly, nothing has changed here. The traits that our forefathers were seeking has meant that the breed is even more relevant for the future. I think if uh, anyone's looking for ease of management and uh, simplicity of breeding cattle, I think uh, they, they must seriously look at drought masters uh, because I have a motto that, that says uh, my cattle must work for me and not me for them. And I think drought masters fit that role pretty well. While much has changed in 60 years, much hasn't. We still have dedicated and passionate breeders. The key attributes of the drought master remain. Its suitability to multi-markets and adaptability to differing environments and its wonderful temperament. The homegrown Droughtmaster breed continues to prove it's equal to any claims to fame that the breed's founders may have had when they set out to develop a breed suitable for the harsh climate of North Queensland. Perhaps if those founders were still here today, they might say indeed that the Droughtmaster has exceeded their expectations.